Now, if I told you I wasn't wearing any trousers, it wouldn't be a lie. <laughs> I'm not wearing any trousers on the bottom. I just feel like I have to open this video with that disclaimer because honesty is indeed the best policy. But yes, hello, how you doing? I've got a microphone today. Hello, reporting for five o'clock news. Roger that. My uncle got me this microphone. I'm very lazy, so I don't always use it, but when I get an item, I can go. Give the people's ears a treat, you know? So yes, thank you, Uncle Mike, for the microphone. I am using it now and again. When it blends into my outfit, it doesn't look so bad, but when I'm wearing like a floral top and I've just got this microphone kind of like stuck on me, I look a little bit like a doofus, but that's okay, that's all right. Now I have got some favorites to share with you and I also thought I would just kind of like show, maybe give you a little sneak peek of the old flat. That was the plan, but I may have to do it tomorrow morning because I'm obviously filming this in the dark. And this room is gonna be a little filming room. Well, I want it to be a filming room. It's gonna be an activities creative room. So at the moment it's obviously not set up. So I'm just kind of like in a corner like this, but eventually it's gonna be a proper space to create and you know, do YouTube a little bit more regularly. Cause I feel like I get on a roll and then I, do you know what I feel like? I come back when my hair is looking stupid. When my hair is looking good, I'm not on YouTube because that's in like the three week break when I'm not posting videos. But yes, how are we all doing? I hope we're doing well. Got just an abundance of tings next to me. Lots and lots of tings to share with you. Um, and if you're new here, <laughs> if you're new here and you've lasted these two minutes of me waffling, then good for you. But I tend to share beauty recommendations, vegan and cruelty free stuff, some sustainable brands, some not so sustainable brands. Do you know what I was thinking about earlier? Have you ever thought about how many brands there are? When I'm on Instagram, I always get recommended new skincare brands, beauty brands, jewelry brands, which I mean, I understand, know your audience and all that, but I just think like, do we need another skincare brand? Do we need another makeup brand? And don't get me wrong, if they're vegan and cruelty free, I'm gonna wanna try them, but it blows my mind how many brands, how much stuff there is out there. And just like looking at all this stuff next to me makes me think I'm just a consumerist through and through but this is the internal battle we face when we when we like beauty products. Anyway, after the longest intro ever, I'm just gonna jump straight on into it with, oh, I've left the tea bag in my tea. That's so annoying. Why do I, what, how does one do that? Let's start with a new launch from SOS. So SOS are a sensitive skin brand, skincare brand, vegan and cruelty free and very, not minimal, I wouldn't say, but just like very, very, very suitable for sensitive skin. They've got a load of, well, actually they've got a collection of products, like a little capsule collection. Their SPF is the SPF 50 I use every single day. I recommend it to every Tom, Dick and Harry and I get tagged in a lot of posts, a lot of <laughs> your guys' posts. When people get on board with it, they say, you know, things like, oh, why wasn't I not using this before? This is the best SPF I've ever used, etc., cetera, et cetera. And I love, we love to hear it because SPF is very important and it's affordable, it's cruelty free, it's great for sensitive I would say it's great for sensitive skin, but also all skin types. That's just a little side note, that's not what this product is, but I love that. And it was in my 2020 favorites. Was it in my 2019 favorites? It's a relatively new find for me because I think they're a new-ish brand. I'm not sure when they started, but anyway, this is their new launch, which is their cleanser. And it is lovely. If you've got sensitive skin and you struggle to find a cleanse, something that cleans your skin, but doesn't strip it. Um, I love the Trilogy cleanser. The cream cleanser by Trilogy is beautiful. I love it so much, but I know if people have really, really, really sensitive skin. Cause I would say I've got sensitive skin, but I can still, if I'm washing something off my face, I can still deal with a little bit of essential oils. Um, I just don't like strongly fragrance things that sting my eyes. This is not fragranced at all. It's fragrance free. It's obviously cruelty free, um, vegan, no parabens, mineral oil, SLS and all that jazz. Um, parabens aren't bad for you. I feel like that's a bit of a marketing thing, but this is just a very, very, very simple, really nourishing, very, very gentle, like cream, is it like a gel cream? It's not quite as thick as the Trilogy one, but it, it's very nice, very, very nice. I really love this. I look forward to using it, if that makes sense. It's very soothing, but it still cleans my skin nicely. If my skin feels like it needs a bit of TLC, I will reach for this one. And if it's any, if it's, if I've got any, and if I've got any redness or anything, then that is my go-to. And I also wanted to recommend their hand sanitizer. If you've been looking for a hand sanitizer and you've got sensitive hands, this is a great one because it's almost like a, yeah, it's like a gel. 
a lot of their products have this kind of consistency. I know a lot of hand gels, like the straight up hand gels can be really, they can really sting your hands if you've got sensitive hands, which I do have sensitive backs of my hands, whereas this brand never irritates my hands at all. And I've also really been liking this one. Sorry, starting with really boring stuff, anti-back. Um, but this one's really nice. I got it in a beauty box and it's the Betty Hula one. If you like fragrance, you might really like this one. I just think a hand cream that's antibacterial is much nicer than a gel. That's just my personal preference, but yeah. Starting off with practical recommendations. And another practical recommendation that I've been loving is CBD. I can't remember, because I do these like sporadic YouTube videos, I can't actually remember if I've recommended this brand before. And if I haven't, then I apologize because this brand is great. And I've tried a couple of CBD brands and they just taste disgusting. Like they taste so gross. It makes me not want to use them. I've tried a few kind of like Holland and Barrett brands, like not Holland and Barrett own brand, but just brands I've seen in Holland and Barrett thought, yeah, I'm going to try that out. Hopefully it will help me sleep. They, they, well, I don't know if they didn't, I didn't notice a difference when I used those ones, but I also didn't persist with them because they tasted so disgusting. Um, whereas this brand, Our Remedy, I love them. I love them. They sent me one a few months ago and once I ran out of that one I bought the sort of higher percentage. I was using the 50 milligrams and then I upped it to the 100 milligrams. So basically CBD, I'm not sure about it in skincare. I mean it's supposed to be soothing. I don't know about the science behind that but definitely definitely take like ingesting it for me it makes a huge difference. I just sleep a lot better. I have a lot more of a deep sleep and it's just, I can't recommend this enough. Now this is pricey. This one is like the higher percentage one. So I actually feel like I don't need as much of this. I kind of just put one drop. Whereas with the other one, I would probably use a couple of drops. So I probably go through that one a bit quicker. This was 45 pounds. Like it's quite a lot of money for a tiny little bottle, but hundred percent would repurchase. I love it. I love it so much. I really recommend if you've, if you struggle with feeling a little bit anxious before or anxious before an event or just yeah I mean I can't really talk for like general anxiety disorder but like for social anxiety it definitely helps and for um yeah just sleeping if you if you need something to help you wind down and chill out and it's also supposed to be really good for information I haven't noticed that but I have also been eating absolute crud I've been having a good time whilst I'm doing it don't get me wrong <laughs> but I have been eating <sighs> I want to say poorly just not very nutritionally focused shall we say for dinner tonight i had a packet of crisps and i'm not talking a little little <laughs> a little walker's packet i'm talking one of the big big sharer bags the mns own brand sea salt and balsamic no sea salt and cider vinegar no regrets though it was really good but i do feel like my face is a bit <laughs> sort of bloated from the salt but that's okay. We only have one life and we're all gonna die eventually, so we may as well eat what we want. Let's run through my current skincare routine or some bits I've really been enjoying when it comes to skincare. So I still love my Heritage Store rose water and glycerin. I love that stuff. It's really, really, really good. Um, but I would say this alongside I've really been enjoying. And this I mentioned in a video. So Face Theory did sponsor a post recently, um, but that was more to do with their makeup, but they also sent me some PR for their skincare alongside. So this is obviously not sponsored but just so you know this was received in PR and I would never have picked this up. I generally do not see the point in toners. I like the Claire's Supple Preparation Toner because that's a really nice bouncy toner but I find most toners on the market are filled with fragrance, alcohols, people try people use them as makeup remover and I, I don't think I need that because I do a double cleanse. So I just never really saw the point in toners unless they were really hydrating and this one is, I find, oh, it's got a hair on it. Excuse me, lads. <laughs> it has got a hair stuck to it. The third ingredient in this is glycerin. It's got vitamin C as sodium ascorbyl phosphate, uh, lactic acid, green tea. Um, it's got aloe vera in it. It's a very kind of like, th not thick, not quite as thick as the Claire's one, but it's not, it's still runny, don't get me wrong, but it's slightly more, because of the glycerin, it feels slightly more bouncy almost but it's not it's not the supple preparation toner it's not that level of bounce but it feels really nice and I feel like my other skincare products go alongside it really really well it's a nice kind of pick me up in the morning so I don't wash my face in the mornings I only do it in the evening time so I don't feel like it needs it in the morning so I've really been enjoying that also been enjoying their Mandela bright serum this is a nice sort of brightening serum um and I feel like it's kind of again it's got a bit of thickness to it because I think it's got hyaluronic acid in it I don't actually know but I feel like it does yeah it does sodium hyaluronate so it's it feels a little bit thicker it's got that kind of like hydrating tendency to it and then I flick between these two moisturizers tendency to it what am I talking about 
Sometimes my choice of words don't really make sense, but you know what I mean. My skin it tends to be dehydrated most of the time because I eat big packets of crisps for tea. And then I think, why am I so dry? Why is my skin so... <laughs> Why is my skin so lacklustre? I don't understand. I go between these two moisturisers and I love them both and I would highly, highly, highly recommend both of these. Two very different price points. I believe this one is about 20 quid. They actually sent this to me as well. So oh, this is face theory, by the way. This is the Seraquench Renewal Cream. I don't, I think it's 20 pounds, but maybe that's the bigger size because this is quite small. It's not a huge pot. I mean, it's lasted me a while, but I'd be surprised if it was 20 pounds, but maybe it is, who knows? Less is more with this, so maybe, maybe 20 pounds is justified, who knows? Um, but this one, I'll start with this one. This one is so slimy, but in the best way. Like I've never felt a moisturizer like this because it says that it's got ceramides and coenzyme Q10 and the ceramides in it are, oh my God. If you're that kind of person that you find most moisturizers just aren't, it's not even like thick, it's not a thick cream at all, um, but it's just so slimy, but in the best way, like if you find most moisturizers aren't quenching enough, I think quench is the perfect name for it because it honestly is just, it pairs so well with other hydrating ingredients before. It's just a wonderful moisturizer. I really, really, really recommend this one. I think it's great, but if you want a budget moisturizer and you've been looking for one, I really recommend this. I'm pretty sure I've talked about Bulldog before, but their sensitive moisturizer is another one that I've been sort of switching between. Actually, I've definitely mentioned this. I mentioned it in my 2020 favorites, but just a heads up, I'm still using and loving this. I think it's so good. I bought loads of them from Superdrug when they had a special deal. So I'm still making my way through them. Let's talk about fragrance, shall we? So I've been going between these two fragrances and they're very much not my usual kind of fragrance. This one, here is by Floral Street and it's actually a little sample I don't have the full size but I've gone through a couple of samples it is called Arizona Bloom and this is definitely not my usual scent if you are not new here you may already know but I love musky scents I love vanilla I love woody scents anything with like a nice musk to it I'm a huge fan of and um, but this one this one does have a little bit of musk to it I'll put the notes here because I'm gonna mess it up, but I feel like it's got a bit of peach. It's, it's a very, very summery scent. It's such a unique scent. I really, really, really recommend because it's, it is fresh, but it's not like crisp, if you know what I mean. You know, some fresh scents you smell a little bit like a sort of like bathroom spray, but this has a muskiness, like a warmth to it, but it's still daytime appropriate and summertime appropriate. I just love this so much. And I do really recommend Floral Street scents if you're looking for a vegan scent. I recommend picking up their little sample packet. I think it's about a tenner. So it's not super duper cheap, but you can try all of their scents in one packet. And I also love Electric Rhubarb. That is a beautiful, fresh scent. It's got a really nice sort of like crisp rhubarbness to it. Um, and I also did a sponsored post with the body shop recently and I've still been loving this perfume because they remade their white musk to be completely vegan. It was obviously already cruelty free but then they made the formula vegan. I actually don't think it was the musk that was non-vegan in it. I think it was something else honey or something i'm not sure i should know that really <laughs> if i've worked on a campaign for them um but anyway this radical scent is really nice it's very summertime appropriate again reminds me a bit of dolce and gabbana light blue which i love that fragrance that is a beautiful fragrance but it's not cruelty free so i don't use it this is definitely my favorite out of the range and this is actually one of their toppers so they remade the original white musk and then these were these are supposed to go with white musk as like a topper but actually i think this is strong enough to use on its own um, and it's a lovely scent. I really, really enjoy those two. Who knew I'd be into fresh scents? Nearly there now, lads. <laughs> I've got a couple of base products that I wanted to talk about. Um, I will start with the concealer, which I, again, I can't remember if I've, I, you, you may be thinking, if you can't remember if you've mentioned it before, why don't you go back on your channel and check? I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to recommend this Revolution Pro concealer if I haven't already. If I have, I still love it. Okay, it's the best concealer I've ever used. And it's 14 pound, it no, it's eight pounds. It comes in 14 shades. I use the shade C6 and it's just the best concealer ever. If you struggle with concealers that crease, you need to try this because I think people who have um, slightly more dry skin or mature skin or literally any skin type, I think would love this. It, it's the most skin-like concealer I've ever used and it's really lovely. I love it. I think the shade match is good for me. It's an, This is a nice neutral, shade really really recommend this i think it's brilliant i need to stock up on some more because if they ever discontinue this i'm screwed i really am um, and i really love pairing it with the fresh face foundation so if you've been looking for a dupe of glossier skin tint or one of those sort of fancy skin tints but you want something affordable this is actually very nice and i actually used this in one of my videos the valentine's day video i did 
I used this and I didn't love it in that video because I don't think my skin was loving life at the time. Like, don't get me wrong, this is only one I'd reach for when my skin is pretty darn good. It's a really nice finish. It looks very, very natural. If you're the kind of person that doesn't like wearing foundation and you, but you want something to kind of even out your skin tone, but do a little bit more than Glossier Skin Tint. Because for me personally, I actually think Glossier Skin Tint is water in a bottle, conspiracy theory. I think it's a waste of time and money. But this is really, really nice. If you want a no makeup makeup look, if you don't like wear it, if you want to let your freckles shine through or your, you know, your kind of discoloration shine through, but you still want a little bit of something on your skin, I do recommend this. I think it's great. It comes in a good number of shades, like a nice spread of shades, and it's pretty affordable as well. It's from Barry M. So that's that one. And then last but not least on the old base side of things, the Buttery Biscuit Base. I've been using the, now this will be surprising because I've been using the MUA Pro Base Full Coverage Matte Pressed Powder. And the MUA Pro Base range is not my favorite, mainly because it breaks me out. Like the foundation breaks me out. The primer oil is too shiny for me. My mum really likes it. I gave it to her and she really likes it. Although she did get some in her eye the other day and she said it really hurt. So don't do that. <laughs> don't follow in Lisa's footsteps but this powder no it doesn't look like much does it it really doesn't look like much but actually it is a really good I think it's full coverage on me I, I've read some reviews people said this is not full coverage but for me it's good coverage for a powder because I feel like most powders don't give they either give really good coverage but they look really cakey whereas this has got like a super silkiness to it I'm very surprised. I really wasn't expecting to like this at all. Um, and actually sometimes I wear this all over my face, like with moisturizer SPF, and then I wear it as a foundation and it's really nice. It wears away really nicely. It doesn't look dry, doesn't look cakey. I'm just very surprised that I like this so much. Not because I don't think MUA are a good brand, but just because the pro base range I don't tend to vibe with. But I do have a whole video testing out MUA products, so if you want to check that out, I will link it for you. Um, but yeah, pleasantly surprised with this. It also works well to kind of top up makeup or um, set your makeup, but um, if you're looking for something that has a bit more coverage, like I like the Avril powders as a pressed powder, but they don't give too much coverage. This shade is actually, as you can see, it's a little bit too warm for me, but it, I can kind of get away with it, but it is technically too warm. So I'd probably go the shade lighter than this. And then last two products, I actually do have one more makeup product to mention. This is the Phase Zero Making Moves Blusher. I feel like I'm really lopsided in this video. What's this space for? I just need to shimmy over. Oh, my butt cheek got stuck to the seat. You can feel the indent. And I'm not really a blusher fanatic. Like I, I like a certain number of blushes and I just think like, yeah, it does the job, it does the job. I love my Sainsbury's palette. It's like a super cheap two pound palette, cruelty free and vegan from Boutique from Sainsbury's. I just pretty much use that every day. But this I wanted to mention because it's obviously vegan, cruelty free. I got it in my Pip box, which is a subscription box. This is so similar to NARS Orgasm, which obviously is not cruelty free. And also if you haven't heard of Nars Orgasm, it was a cult classic blush. I don't know if it still is. I never hear anyone talk about it. All the rage, 2010. If anyone was around on YouTube in 2010, it honestly was all the rage. Um, and this has a very similar kind of tone to it. The gold reflect, it's all very similar, but this is much smoother. Um, I know some people dupe it with, or dupe the Nars, Oops. Dupe the Nars one with the sleek palettes, which I do really like, but I feel like this is a little bit more smooth. Um, there you go. So you can see like it's definitely an acquired taste. It is a peach with a gold reflect. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone, but it is very smooth. If you liked NARS, but you now you've gone cruelty free and you want something that is cruelty free and vegan, I really recommend this. Or if you really liked the tone of orgasm, but you wanted something that a bit more smooth, I really recommend this. And it's so sleek and small. And I think they're, they're kind of like a capsule brand. I don't know. I had a look at their Instagram and it looks like they only do blushes and highlighters. But maybe I've got that wrong. I don't know. Never heard of this brand before, before I tried them in the box. Oh, tell a lie. I've got two things to mention. So this one here, this is the Tropic Perfect Skin Resurfacing Body Lotion. I have not been using this on my body because it's a little bit sticky. A tiny bit sticky. Like the smallest bit sticky. And I think it's because... It's got plant AHAs in it or alpha hydroxy acids, which are a kind of chemical exfoliant. And I just feel like it's the tiny, tiniest bit tacky and you probably wouldn't notice it on your body, but I use it on my hands. Um, so I do notice it because obviously when something's sticky, <laughs> sticky on your hands, you kind of feel it. Um, but I just wanted to say that straight up. It is a tiny bit sticky and I don't use this on my body because the idea behind it is it's supposed to be a resurfacing lotion. So it's supposed to kind of like exfoliate your skin and make your skin look 
bright and nice but I gradual tan on my body I have actually been using the tropic gradual tanner but um, I don't want to exfoliate it off you know I want my gradual tan to stay as long as possible because otherwise then I have to scrub it off the next day and all this jazz so um, I've actually been using this on my fingers to be precise because I have an issue where well I have been having an issue where I kind of eat my own fingers which sounds weird <laughs> I kind of bite this part like the edges of my fingers and the other week it was getting to cannibalist level like it my I looked at my hands and they were just sore bleeding gross looking to be completely frank they look disgusting my nails were also bitten down to a crisp there was nothing left to bite so I've started putting a little clear polish on my nails actually I'm very proud of that I never used to be a nail biter I used to have the re most ridiculously long nails natural nails honestly any of my friends will know I had a thumbnail like this long and confession time I used to eat my apple it was kind of a party trick I didn't actually <laughs> I didn't actually eat the whole apple like this, but I would get the apple, put my really long thumbnail in, go like this all the way around till I cut out a, like a little uh, cylinder kind of shape and eat it. <laughs> it was disgusting, don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, just to show you how long my thumbnail used to be. But anyway, my, nail, my nails and my fingers were looking like they'd been through a sh uh, blender, shredded to bits. So I thought I would try this on the edge of my fingers and actually it worked an absolute treat. It really did. So it kind of like very gently chemically exfoliates so that it got rid of the dead skin cells, like the kind of buildup. I would not recommend putting it on open wounds on your fingers, which obviously is common sense, but I had quite a lot of cuts from where I'd like bitten down and made my fingers bleed. I don't know what that is. What is this? It's probably just a sign of stress, but this worked really, really well at that. And it smells like love hearts. It smells like the love heart sweeties. And I just, I love this so much. It's such a niche use for it. I, I personally wouldn't use this on my body. Cause like I say, I like my gradual tan to stay as long as possible, but on my fingers, I use it and it works an absolute treat. And I actually don't know anything else on the market that does that, that's vegan and cruelty free. So really, really loving this. Did just wanna end on this, which is a hand wash, probably quite boring, but I just wanted to mention Faith in Nature are really, I see them a lot. And I always used to think like, uh, hand wash is so boring. Like what? what's the hype around a hand wash? A hand wash is a hand wash. But obviously since we've moved, or I've moved out, I need a hand, I need to like buy my own hand wash and stuff. And luckily I had one of these left over from um, when they actually sent me a few bits. And we've got one in the kitchen, we've got the grapefruit one in the kitchen and this one is in the bathroom. And it's just a really nice lather is all I'll say. Like it smells lovely, it's got a really nice lather. I know a hand wash isn't very exciting, I know you can get them loads of places, but if you wanna gift someone some hand stuff, cause I think that's quite a nice present, isn't it? A hand wash, a hand lotion, maybe some hand sanitizer, go for a whole theme. They don't strip the hands, which I think is a good sign, a sign of a good hand wash, when your hands feel clean but not stripped. You know what I'm saying? So yes, that's pretty much it. Those are the products I wanted to mention. Um, I think I'll just put on a little bit of this blush because I did talk about it and I didn't show you it. Oh, I just realized I'm not wearing any bronzer. I thought my face looked a little bit moon-like and I thought it was just the crisps, but I mean, it probably is mainly the crisps, but I'm also not wearing any bronzer. I'm now putting on a lot of blush to make up for it. Because it's got a natural sort of sheen to it. That blush placement is awful. <laughs> don't judge me <laughs> it's been a long day but you can see you know the placement's rubbish but you can see the kind of reflect is a really pretty gold shade so yes that's that blush and that's everything I wanted to mention thank you ever so much for watching I will be putting out a video on our flat hunt because I know I promised that in my latest vlog and I will be putting that up uh, sometime soon I just need to film it <laughs> I've got all the clips of the flats obviously but I just need to do the little voiceover part and take a little trip down memory lane even though it was only a month ago <laughs> uh, but that will be coming soon so be sure to subscribe if that sounds like something you're interested in I've got something in my eye so I am going to go <laughs> and stare in the bathroom mirror until I get it out but yeah I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll hopefully see you very soon bye <laughs>